this camera angle, I'm fully aware it's not the one. Like, it, you're basically looking up at me. I, I've been trying to, like, work out where to put the camera and trying to create a cute background and utterly failing, so I do apologise for that. But hey, guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Now, a bit of a journey to get to this point, I can't lie. I did actually film this entire video yesterday. You guys may have seen my story. I said that when I went to upload the footage of the video, a lot of it was completely black. The footage just wasn't there it had sound but it had no I wasn't I wasn't there I actually in the end did manage to get that video footage to work but in the meantime whilst it wasn't working and whilst I'd sort of convinced myself that I'd have to refilm the video I convinced myself that I didn't like the footage that I filmed there was nothing wrong with the video that I filmed yesterday I just talked myself into not liking it so we're back here today I'm actually flying to Paris in a few hours for a photo shoot so I'm squeezing and filming this again this morning I popped up a Q&A box on my Instagram story yesterday to ask you guys and um, what questions you want to ask me in regards to my endometriosis the main question above every single question was what is endometriosis so I'm going to read you the definition of it now before we get into this video just so for the people that don't get it for the girls that don't get it they're about to get it endometriosis is a long-term condition where tissue similar to the lining of the womb grows in other places such as the ovaries and the fallopian tubes symptoms of endometriosis include pain in your lower tummy or back severe period pain and pain during or after sex that is the google definition of what endometriosis is for you guys that don't know what it is or if you felt like you kind of knew what it was but you weren't really sure that is basically the condition that I've been suffering with since I believe I was about 15. Something that's also really amazing is that March is also Endometriosis Awareness Month, so I wanted to film the video this month and just bite the bullet and put it out to you guys. You could say that I have been putting off a little bit, a little bit nervous to film this video. This is definitely my disclaimer to say that I am in no way, shape or form a health professional and I think I've been putting off this video because I've been a little bit scared about, you know, saying the wrong thing or giving the wrong advice or giving the wrong facts and I know that girls that suffer with endo especially normally jump in my DMs when I put anything out on my socials and sometimes can get quite upset when they feel like I'm not shining the correct light on this on this condition. I've had girls say that they think I'm making endometriosis a trend. They think I, they, they've said that they think I'm trying to make it cool and fashionable to have it. I would never want to make anybody feel like I'm not doing this condition justice and I'm not explaining it correctly. So what I think I'm trying to say is that I'm just going to come on here and explain my story. It's going to be only my story. I'm going to be answering your questions and answering them from my perspective, from what I've experienced. I'm still on this journey myself. I just think we need to be supporting one another. And I just think if this video helps one girl that suffers with endo and wants to feel a little bit more reassured and feel like they're not alone, amazing. Or if it helps one girl that feels like they may have the signs and symptoms of it and they want to go and uh, speak to a doctor about it, then amazing. This is what this video is for. But anyway, that's the longest intro I've ever filmed. Um, and without further ado, I'm just going to get straight into the questions. And I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Question number one, how old were you when you first knew something wasn't right what were your symptoms that's a really really popular question so it's hard because obviously it's been a very long journey and trying to picture back to when I was super young and I feel like I first started having symptoms since having a period things have never been normal I never actually remember having a period ever in my life and it feeling what a normal period I think should feel like I can't actually tell you the specific age of when I started my period because I really don't know but I do think from around the age of 15 I knew something was really really not right in that region. I think in the end I kind of ended up convincing myself that my period pains were normal but I just had a super low pain threshold. I kind of thought maybe this is what every girl goes through but I just find it super hard. As for the symptoms mine have definitely definitely worsened over the years. I cannot explain the levels of pain I've experienced through my periods over the last few years. I've actually nearly called myself an ambulance on multiple occasions because of the level of pain that I was in. I used to be in bed, especially at the old apartment. It got so bad to the point I'd be rolling in bed and I would actually be fearful for my life, thinking like, for my body to be in this much agonizing pain, like what is it going through? Like what is happening inside my body? I, I, I literally used to lie there and think like, am I gonna see tomorrow morning? Like, cause it would always normally happen in the night that I'd come on my period. And I genuinely used to be in that much pain that I would be fearful that I wouldn't wake up the next day. Like it was so, so horrendous. And that's not even me being dramatic. Like it was, Tommy never even used to know what to do with me, like how to help me. He'd just be looking at me like, 
more like I literally just don't know what to do. For me to convince myself that that level of pain was normal, it was just a bit ridiculous. And, it, and to be fair, it definitely did get worse over the years and it got to a point where I just realized this is absolutely on no way, shape or form normal. You know, I'm having to take weeks off work when I come on my period, on the day that I come on my period, where if I'm in a public place, I have to get out of there as quick as possible to get into a safe space in my house where I can just be in excruciating pain and cry and scream alone. Mama? Mama, you wanna be in the video? You wanna be in the video? Nah. Ah! Oh! Nah, guys! Guys, he just ripped my chest off. This is a really serious video and I'm messing around with my cat. The main other symptom that I've experienced as well is the painful sex. So my two main symptoms have been the excruciating periods and the excruciating sex. I'll be completely honest, I do believe that the painful sex symptom is what pushed me into getting my problem fixed, into working out what was wrong with my body because not only was I doing it for me and fixing it for me, which is obviously the main reason as to why you do it, but I was also trying to do it for my partner. I was trying to do it for Tommy because as I get further into the video, I'll explain about um, the painful sex side of things and the symptoms of that and the journey with that because that's a whole other ball game. And I feel like the painful periods and the painful sex have been like two completely different journeys that I've been on. When did you first go to the doctors? What did they say? I'm trying to do these in a bit of an order. I think I first went to the doctors about my painful periods when I was around 17. I explained that I was experiencing excruciating period pains. This was just about the period pains at the time. I don't think I'd started experiencing the painful sex at that point. As I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you've heard other people's endo stories you will have heard that they also probably got told the same as I did you know it's thrush it's BV you're not taking the right painkillers when you come on your period um these are just normal period pains you've just got to kind of suck it up basically and I think it actually took me me going back to the doctors around five times to actually have someone say to me okay it could be endometriosis I do feel like I was suffering with it the whole time and it was never even an option it was never even spoken to me about it wasn't even like it could be this it was just always completely shut down I was told it was always oh it's you know you've got thrush which it completely was not that because I've had thrush and I think when you're a woman you know the difference between thrush and excruciating period pains like it has no relation whatsoever I think in the end you just think okay well it's a medical professional like they're telling me that I'm fine so I'm fine after one of my doctor's appointments of me returning and saying like these period pains just aren't going away I don't know what to do they actually did put me on the pill which I'll be completely honest it did actually help but me personally I have never ever liked being on the pill um I've only ever been on the pill for that one time to help my period pains it wasn't even for contraception reasons because at that time I wasn't even having sex um but I just didn't like the idea of having to be on contraception to help my period pains like I just didn't want to be on contraception. I didn't want to be putting something into my body. It's just something that I think personally has never really agreed with me. Anyway, the symptoms just got progressively, progressively worse. The, ex the symptoms that I was experiencing in our old apartment, I cannot even begin to explain how unwell my periods were, ma were making me. Like Fran always knew to have to book me off a complete week off work around the time of my period because I just felt like I'd been hit by a car. My sex life became, at that point, basically non-existent because my sex drive was so low. The pain was that excruciating during sex that you're literally just doing it for your partner. And that's not pleasant for them because they freaking know. They know that you're not enjoying it because, I mean, to pretend you're not in excruciating pain and you're completely the opposite and you're having a great time and you're enjoying it, let me tell you, it's not really possible. But in the end, my my GP Sally Harris who is absolutely amazing she referred me over to a um, endometriosis specialist he was called Eddie Osagi so, yeah, I went to see the specialist Eddie Osagi who was absolutely incredible and he literally did an internal examination took one look at me took one look at those regions and said yes you absolutely do have endometriosis what you've been dealing with is absolutely not normal he made me feel like thank you like finally someone is listen to me like finally someone's actually taken me on for a long while i had thought it had been endometriosis and i'd just been shut down and shut down so to hear those words of someone saying like a specialist in endometriosis saying you do have it even though it was like hard to hear and sad because obviously i know it can have so many implications later on in life and when you want to have children and stuff um but it was still re a relief and i was still happy to hear it because i was like i knew something wasn't right i knew this wasn't normal i knew i wasn't exaggerating i will just add as well he wasn't gonna officially know that i had endometriosis until he went internally 
and did a proper examination and did the laparoscopy, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, but he was like, initially, I, I would say that I'm 80% sure that you do have endometriosis. Please, can you discuss your laparoscopy experience? Essentially, a laparoscopy is keyhole surgery. Um, and I had a laparoscopy in order for my surgeon to get inside me and burn away the endometriosis cells. So get rid of the cells where they shouldn't be, just get rid of the cells altogether, put a camera inside you so they can see what's going on, they can see the endometriosis cells. I wouldn't necessarily want to go through it again, but as far as operations go, it isn't like major, major surgery. It is keyhole surgery. The recovery time was a lot longer than I had initially been told and I had expected. I was told that after a couple of days, I would sort of feel normal again, but I would definitely say it took a full week. For the operation, they have to pump up your stomach with loads of gas to sort of make it big so they can see your insides properly basically and have like more space to get like things in this is where my medical knowledge is not is not on point i wish i documented it more i wish i'd filmed more i wish i'd shown you guys that day but if you know me you know that i have a huge phobia of um needles and veins like a massive phobia of it so i think i had planned to document it but when i got into the hospital my, there was no my, way my vlogging camera was coming out i was just trying to get through that experience of having blood tests having cannulas being put to sleep like it was a very very anxious day for me and obviously with covid and everything i had to do it all by myself i would say one of the most traumatizing parts of the day of my laparoscopy was actually in the morning when I first went into the hospital and nobody warned me that, oh my God, okay, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna tell you what happened. Basically, you have to have a tablet, like it's called a suppository, I think, popped up your bottom in order to make you go to the toilet and basically clear your bowels. Um, no one warned me about that part. Like no one told me and this nurse came in and she was like, but I just need to pop the suppository up your bum now. And I was like, huh, sorry, what? Sorry, what? I was like, please, can I, was like, can I possibly do it myself? Like, I, I'm sure I can find the right hole. Like, I'm sure I can pop the suppository at my bottom. She was like, you know, I would quite prefer to do it myself. I'd quite like to do it for you, just so I know it's been done correctly. So I literally had to lie on my side and have this poor nurse put a suppository up my bum. One thing that actually did happen as well, a tiny little extra story time on my operation. Um, when I came out of my operation, um, the tape that they used to keep your eyes shut um, in the operation had actually cut my eyeball. I was in absolutely agonizing pain with my eyeball um, and none of the doctors were really taking me on. I was in a lot of discomfort with my stomach from my operation, but I couldn't even focus or concentrate on like looking after that pain or like giving that pain any time because my my eye was so swollen. I couldn't see out of my eye. It was streaming, streaming, streaming. I'm there trying to get discharged from the hospital with a, a belly the size of an absolute beach ball. And I'm having to go to the eye section of the hospital and have eye tests. I got put into this like machine thing to like look at my retina and like see the cut. And like they had to give me this special ointment. And um, I was in so much pain with my eyes. So there was just, like, just little things like that that you don't even think are gonna be complications. But yeah, a lot of you were asking to see the scars that the surgery left so i will try and show you how cute is this jumper by the way it's from zara i got it yesterday this is the first time i bought something from zara in literally probably like a year now i'm not even joking i just stopped shopping there because i felt like the stuff just went weird anyways that is the first scar so that's one of the places they went in for my laparoscopy they also went in in my belly button but yeah my belly button looks completely normal now and then that's just one of the little scars there I'll zoom this screen in so you can see but this is another one of my scars just here this one is slightly bigger um it's a bit longer but yeah that's one of my scars there and then i have another one is just there so it's one two three and four that was they were the four points that they went in so really the scars are absolutely minor okay next question and a lot of you guys are asking do you feel like you've seen results from your operation has it worked okay so i definitely wanted to give myself enough time after my operation it's been at least five months now since i had my surgery i wanted to give that time before making this video to be able to come back and say if the operation worked. Now, in regards to my painful periods, I would say the operation definitely, definitely helped. It has most definitely not cured me. Um, I still do have very painful periods. I'm still extremely heavy on my periods. Um, that's another thing I didn't mention about the heaviness of my periods. Um, I would normally have to change tampons every like 30 minutes. I do suffer as well with extremely heavy periods. Um, the painful periods and the heavy periods, they haven't like completely gone away but they are definitely more manageable now so 
would I go through the operation again in order to have the results that I've had? Yes, because my periods were my periods were that painful to the point where it was like essentially like ruining my life. In regards to the painful sex, um, that has unfortunately never changed. Um, it's something that I do still. Um, it's still an ongoing issue, and that is actually why on my vlog the other day I said that I'd had a blood test and I'd had an MRI scan um, because I'm going to see a specialist gynaecologist in London very soon in regards to that situation. But yeah, the laparoscopy has definitely um, helped with half of the issue. It's made my periods a lot more manageable now. Everyone's journey is so completely different. Like you could have had the laparoscopy and it could have cured absolutely everything and you may have never felt symptoms ever again. Or you could have had the laparoscopy and had even less results than I did and have not felt any changes at all. A lot of you guys were asking me as well, like how does Tommy handle it? How is Tommy? Tommy, I couldn't ask for a better boyfriend in regards to my endometriosis journey. He has been absolutely incredible he is so understanding he's so caring having people that understand like supportive friends supportive family supportive partner is so 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 key in regards to endometriosis because it can feel very very lonely i know i'm going to watch this video back and go to edit it and be like i've missed out this i've missed out this i wanted to talk about this but one thing i would say is that i i have found filming this video quite hard because to remember my story and the journey like word for word and fact for fact and like the whole journey since I'm 15, I was 15, like it's really tricky and it's hard to remember it. And it's been such an ongoing, long, lengthy thing that I've experienced for so many years now that yeah, recalling it and explaining it to you guys is quite hard. Sorry guys, my camera died. I just had to change the battery pack quickly. One thing I do want to quickly just say is a shout out to Eddie Osagi, the doctor that did my laparoscopy and also diagnosed me with my endometriosis and also shout out to my GP, Sally Harris, helping me get diagnosed basically and for um, believing me when I said that I knew that something wasn't right. I'll leave some information down below as well. I'll leave some links to websites and stuff if you want to read more about endometriosis because obviously as I said a million times in this video, I'm not a doctor and I cannot give you like the science behind it. My journey very much continues. One thing I didn't really touch on in this video, um, which I also got a lot of questions about is how endometriosis can affect fertility and trying to conceive and loads of people asking me if we're trying to conceive right now which we aren't um we're definitely not trying to conceive right now i am still only 22 years old and um it's not something that i've really given too much thought in terms of if my endometriosis is going to affect myself and tommy trying to have a baby in the future it's something that i don't really I, until i need to think about that i'm not going to be thinking about it um, i'm just trying to be positive and focus on um continuing my journey of trying to get better and curing the painful sex is, is, is the thing i'm focusing on right now guys because i've got to do it for me and i've got to do it for my boyfriend like you know we've got to, got to try and fix it if you made it to the end of this video guys i love you millions if you watch this video and you don't have endometriosis thank you for watching it and listening um, to my story and if you do have endometriosis and you're watching this video then i hope this has comforted you and made you remember that you are not alone and that a lot of us are going through it and i hope this has also reminded some of you that we've got to support each other through this like, let's be kind to one another thank you so much for watching this video guys and hopefully i will see you all in my next one bye